Live with Joey Reynolds and News with Paul McGregor. Now, here's Joey. Welcome to another edition of Get the Host. <laughs> <laughs> if you have been listening for the last half hour on 85 Radio, which is KOA, 85 on the AM dial, then you've been listening to a marvelous lady. Her name is Madeline Murray O'Hare. She's very bright. She has a lot of, uh, she has a lot of words. <laughs> it's a very opinionated and uh, frighteningly so. Frighteningly so for me, because I'm the one who's experiencing this right now. <laughs> I would like you to join us and to jump into this broadcast. And if you have a point of view that is different from Madeline's, you sure can call us. If you have one that concurs with her, you can call us also. Uh, we like pro and con, and you, there's going to be a lot of that. Uh, she's very controversial. Uh, she's an atheist and a confessed, self-confessed atheist, probably as I read it, the first woman to really organize atheism in this country. And maybe I'm wrong about that, we'll find out in a second. But to my knowledge, she's the first. And uh, the, the amazing thing is that she is a lady. And for a woman to get that far is, uh, is pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, and there's a lot of other impressive things. She's, she's got, she has a lot of good political views. And uh, reading between the lines, I like that myself. Uh, I don't agree with her atheism, but that's all right. And uh, I'm just the moderator, folks. 861-TALK is our phone number. Also, we have someone who is sitting next to Madeline, who is, uh, I haven't met him on radio. We haven't had him on radio yet. If you haven't listening on radio, now you turn to television, now that we're simulcasting. Uh, we don't have an equal time law on this show, and we haven't been cutting you out, Steve. But Steve, Steve Sidoric, Sidoric, who is the uh, executive director of the Council of Churches in Colorado for the whole state. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Steve? That's right. Uh, you are a minister. Right. Of what sect? What denomination? What denomination? United Methodist. Okay. Sect was right. Okay, what sect? Well, what's the difference between, between a denomination and a sect? These That's words. Madeline. Are, all right, Madeline, what's the difference? Well, I think that uh, the uh, word sect has been used to disparage people like Jim Jones, etc. But uh, if we go into Christianity and use Christianity as a denomination of religion, which is really what it is, then all of them are sects. Uh, and uh, the Roman Catholic is a sect, and the Methodist is a sect, etc. And they have no right to turn up their nose at poor old Jim Jones. What do you feel about Jim Jones, Steve? Are you well run on that subject? Well, well we don't uh, know about the Guyana incidents, but uh, to take uh, one one thing I noticed about Madeline, she always takes the worst case and never the best when she's discussing there isn't anything any best. religious. And uh, the Jones incident and uh, the tragic massacre of the people is uh, is a sectarian issue. It's not a, a mainline, let's say, Christian issue. Uh, although she would probably want to make it out to be such a thing. Well, let me ask you as a Methodist, do you think that the suppression of the people in England with the Methodist Church during the nascent uh, beginning of capitalism uh, was a suppression of human rights equivalent to Jim Jones with what you did with the Methodist Church and your crazy Wesley in England? Well, all I know about Wesley oh. in 18th century England is that they, uh, many historians say that England was spared a bloodbath uh, unlike the French revolution because, because of, of the movement. Methodist Church subjugating those people psychologically uh, until they didn't have an opportunity uh, to do what was necessary to do at that time which has since locked us in uh, to a system that uh, has turned out to be quite pernicious and to say that there would have been a bloodbath in England equivalent to the bloodbath in France is to uh, disparage English history and the period of that particular time but the Methodist Church does not have clean hands and you do not can come into an arena to talk about Jim Jones when you have a bloody past and when Wes Wesley was probably one of the most insane religious personages ever to appear in history. So don't talk about Jim Jones. Uh, we could take every single um, denomination or sect of religion and show its past from the Methodists to the Mormons to the Presbyterians to the Unitarians uh, and show what has come from uh, the indoctrination of religion on uh, mankind. Okay, we're going we're gonna to take a little break here, and then we're going to come back and take some phone calls. And, of course, everybody will get a chance to speak. 861-TALK, 861-TALK is our phone numbers. This is All Night Live. I'm Joey Reynolds with Madeline O'Hare. Do, do I have to call you Murray? <laughs> no, that's all right. And, and Reverend Steve. We'll be right back, folks. <laughs> Madeline Murray O'Hare is with us. We're going to get serious now. You can get on the phones. I know this is a very serious subject. And, uh, Reverend Steve Sadark, who is our guest, he is from the Council of Churches, along with Madeline Murray O'Hare. Uh, you can address either guest or both of them if you like. 861-TALK. We will take a call now from Minnesota. 
This is from where? Mentalo, Minnesota? Is that where this town is? Mankato. Mentalo. Mankato, Minnesota. How do you do? What's your first name? Bob. Hi, Bob. Yeah. Hey, Madeline, it's been a long time since I've talked to you. Go ahead. I uh, have two observations that I have uh, 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 arrived at. I uh, accept the Bible uh, allegorically rather than literally. That's nice. That's one way to do it. And uh, when I reduce those allegories to the primitive, or the primal, I arrive at the idea that the story of the Last Supper is the story of cannibalism. And I r arrive at the idea that the story of the virgin birth, when it speaks of God the Father, is talking about incest. Well, that's one interpretation, um, and I think that all of these interpretations have come along, some of them seriously, by uh, some scholars, some of them um, those who, are, who, who scoff at a particular religion, such as your hitting striking here at the Roman Cath uh, Catholic religion. Uh, but uh, everybody has their own interpretation of it, since the Bible can be interpreted by all hands to their best benefit or their own purpose. Yeah, the old uh, Freud's pleasure principle. Well, it's good for that. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's, uh, you have the little book in hand and uh, your uh, woman and a bottle of wine, and you can go into a pornographic promo. Steve, yeah. what do you got to say about that? Give you a little chance here. Well, sacred scripture can be easily disparaged by anybody who so chooses. And uh, I, I want to ask her a question about... Uh, Why do you say sacred scripture before you ask the question? Because what is sacred about this? Well, you're entitled to your opinions, and I'm entitled to mine. Uh, you know that being a lawyer in a free country. No, well, let me uh, ask you, but you're, uh, you're appending this with the word sacred, and why do you do that? Joy, I'm going to ask for your help during the course of the interview, because you've noted I've not interrupted her once, and she already has interrupted me twice. Oh, well, I would like as we go on, I'll interrupt you hundreds of times if you have nothing to say. Uh, and I would like to get back to this. Why do you say it's sacred? Do you think God wrote it? She mentioned about her having a son who she referred to as a black sheep in her family. And she also mentioned in that context irrationality uh, of his uh, ideation. And she said, we believe in verifiability. That was a quote. And she also said immediately after that, a quote, we have no we belief have system. Yeah, that was a slip of my tongue. Well, I would like to know and what... I would admit to that. But, but you're still begging a question here because you started to ask me about a quote sacred book and you still haven't defined your terms I yet. didn't ask you about that. I want to ask you a question about verifiability, what that means for you. Uh, any kind of objective reality, please. Is there any such thing as... Uh, Can you verify the Holy Ghost for me? I'm sitting here. Bring him up. Um, I was asking you a question. Well, on the other hand, if you want verifiability, uh, why don't you transcend yourself? I'm here. Go let, him have, let him have his question. Oh. It's okay. Right. Are, there, are there any such things that one could uh, include in one's vocabulary, like, let us say, love, uh, did you ever see love without a physical body attached? Your wife is going to have a child tonight, I understand. Did the Holy Ghost visit her, or did you have uh, sexual relations with her in order to have that? And is that a part of the love experience? Uh, can that co empty room over there have a love experience? Love comes from a living mind and from a body attached to it. How do you know and that? And from the emotions, because I happen to be uh, a part of that experiment. It's an objective reality, then? It is objective reality. I dare you to have love without a mind. For instance, Karen, uh, what's her name, who is still hooked Quinlan, up? Karen Quinlan. Quinlan. Karen Quinlan. Tell me how she loves tonight the persons who are taking care of her. How do you verify love objectively? Uh, we can verify love objectively by the uh, uh, measure of the human relationships between people. There, you don't think or even with my dog. I love my dog. No, there's a lack of love in your family, however, and my dog. with your son, because you don't like him anymore. Uh, that has nothing to do at all with emotions. That has to do with intellectual ideas. I completely, totally repudiate the idea sets that he has. Uh, and this is the only thing that we are talking about when we're talking about the irrationality isn't uh, it hard, that he is exhibiting. Isn't it hard to live such a schizophrenic life where one deals only intellectually with issues and not... In, uh, in who says that it's schizophrenic? What is schizophrenic is for a chemist all day to work in a chemistry laboratory and on Sunday to go to church and to say this wine is blood and this uh, bit of bread is flesh. That's schizophrenia. 
it's schizophrenic for you uh, to walk down the street and have a perception that there might be angels or life after death. That's schizophrenic because you are dealing with that which is not there. You are outside of the realm of verifiable experience. And you know that, and I know that. Well, you, you're trying to externalize schizophrenia. I'm trying to internalize it and ask you how you hold together your life intellectually and emotionally, let's say. Uh, and I physically. don't have any difficulty at all because uh, any atheist uh, is totally integrated. You are not. You have two lives. You have a rich fantasy life, and then you have a life which is related to reality. You have a life where you can go to the hospital tonight uh, with your wife, who is delivering perhaps tonight. And then you have a rich fantasy world where you pray to God, and you expect God to return that prayer and to interfere. And you actually think you have lines of communication, and you talk about things of life after death and the efficacy of prayer, which is all nonsense talk. Uh, and nonsense, death is a nonsense word. Let's take a break. Death is a nonsense word. Take a break here. Okay, I want to go to the phone numbers. They're going to be right back. This is our regular time schedule. I'm not interrupting imprudently. It's 861-TALK, 861-TALK. If you want to be on the air with us, and we promise we'll take a lot of phone calls. So stand by, and if you are on the phone, please hold and be patient with us. Madeline Murray O'Hare and Steve Siddharth. <laughs> On All Night Live, we have one rule on this show. Don't talk unless you can improve silence. I'm Joey Reynolds. <laughs> Reynolds, I don't know my own name. Bre Joey Reynolds. Marilyn Murray O'Hare oh. is here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve Zadark from the Council of Churches. He's the executive director of Colorado. And we're going to take some calls now. To make this fair, I will push this button, which is line four, and it's Colorado Springs. You're on the air on KOA. And with Madeline Murray O'Hare and Reverend Steven Zadark, who is the Council of Churches representative. He's the executive director for the state of Colorado. And your phone participation is welcome at 861-TALK. We were in the middle of something before we were really interrupted by the cold weather news. Steve, do you have something to say on the issue? Can we pick up where we left off before? There were three questions asked Madeline, and uh, she answered them, and you may have something to say about them. Well, in her answer, she said one thing that really uh, uh, riled me, as it were. Uh, one thing I've noticed in her discussion is that she can't generalize, so she therefore will generalize. And she made a statement, a uh, glaring generalization. Religion always supports the established order. Uh, how, what, what religion always supports the established order? In what ways, in what instances? Oh, you have to be kidding. Uh, give me Surely in uh, seminary school, you were taught some kind of history, and particularly the history of religion. And you know as well as I do that any time a particular a state abandoned a particular god, that god failed. For instance, the Egyptian sun god Ra is no longer the god of Egypt, is he? Or the uh, god Zeus is no longer the god of Greece, is he? Uh, and the same way here, of course, in the United States, Christianity is supported by tax dollars. As a matter of fact, you got $151, million, $151 billion dollars for social services, for the churches to administrate. And I know that the Methodist Church had their finger in that gravy because I've written about the Methodist Church and how you have just recently, um, in trying to flim-flam old people uh, with your homes for the aged, have had to refund uh, millions of dollars to those people uh, for taking money from them in a, a way that was unprincipled and, uh, uh, you would say, unchristian. So that constantly, yes, you are supported by the state. You are supported by tax exemption. You are supported enough, by you, grants from the states. May I have some assistance? Ironically enough, you turn the Why don't you turn to God around. for assistance instead of Joey? Um, maybe I should. Yeah. Um, you, you turned it around. I asked you why you said religion always supported the established order. The and you turned because around Because the, the established, established order supports religion. religion. That's right. You are in an unconstitutional marriage in the United States. Uh, and uh, you, can, you keep up that marriage because uh, this gives you the wherewithal. For instance, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of property from the federal government. Uh, you're not going to support the object of your uh, the uh, person from whom you get your largesse? Of course you are. Tax exemptions. You're going to support the object of those ta tax exemptions, etc. You do support the established order in America. You have never at any time uh, been on the side of minority. Uh, tell me when you came out for the black man. 
It was after the black man and the brown decision that you jumped on the bandwagon. Tell me when you came out to get children out of coal mines. It was after the union movement. What, is this the entire concept of churches you're saying? No, the uh, churches, the churches, no, the, jur the churches, and particularly in America, support the established order. You didn't fight for the 40-hour week. You haven't fought for women's liberation. You didn't fight for the ERA. Tell me right now if the Methodist Church in America is coming out and saying that there should be no nuclear war. Right, or yes, are you are. in support of Reagan? Uh, let me, well, if you're, let me if you're in support of the new, if you're against the nuclear war, what does the United war, Methodist Church say about nuclear war? You have been a voice what does of the United Methodist Church say in the land. About I haven't war. heard it. Oh, we have to take a break. And I'm again. very, very perceptive as to what goes on. Hold on, it's 112 Denver time, 303 861 TA. Okay, this is all night live with Madeline Murray O'Hare and with Reverend Stephen Sadark from the Council of Churches from Colorado. put all of the religious shows on Sunday nights on radio and television? Why do they put them on ob at obscure times? Um, why, I thought they were all on Sunday mornings. So I don't know. We get 6.30 <laughs> airtime on uh, other channels in town. Uh, it's, it varies with locale. Do you get that free? Uh, some of it we do, public service time. Do you think that the American atheists in Denver, Colorado should have equal time then with you uh, since you get it free? Well, well, this is a Christian nation, isn't it? No, it is not a Christian nation. It's a secular nation, and Sears Roebuck is much more important than Jesus Christ. Was this not founded as a Christian nation? Of course not. It wasn't? No. The pilgrims did not come here as a result of a religious oppression? Uh, wait a minute. For, uh, number one, the pilgrims did not establish the United States, and the pilgrims were a very small group of persons, and when they came here, they established a theocracy which was much worse than that from which they fled. Now, in regard to the founding of the nation, the founding of the nation was by deists to a man. The first six presidents were deists. They were anti-Christian and they said so. Benjamin Franklin was anti-Christian. Mm. Thomas Paine was anti-Christian, to name a few that the audience knows. George Washington was anti-Christian. Colonel Ethan Allen was anti-Christian. They wrote books about it. Thomas Jefferson was anti-Christian. James well, Madison, do you, do you etc. Do you believe in a higher power? Um, do you believe in, in computers a, are a pretty high cop? Well, so is a doorknob. But do you uh, do you believe that something greater than you puts you here? No, of course not. You don't. I, well, how do you think you got here? You didn't here? ask. Oh, come on! You're asking a leading question. My mother and father were in bed one night, and that's and how, did how I got here. here. And how did how did they get well, here? Well, the their question that you want to pose is uh, from whence was life derived? And I think that we're finding the answer in laboratories all over the world. Uh, we are finding that from the inorganic came the organic. And I think that what we have to say is we do not know anything about, quote, a beginning or, quote, a continuum. What we must do is hold back on any kind of decision in relationship to this and um, say that we are ignorant of it until through astrophysics or biochemistry or space exploration well, do you disavow or the astronomy. spiritual side of life then? Is that, is that it entirely? There is no spiritual That's, side Well, then you life. disavow it. You don't agree with that. You don't believe in it. You don't think uh, it exists. There's nothing to disavow. If there is nothing there, you can't disavow it. Well, I'm here to tell you that I am spiritually in order. And oh, I'm you are. mentally in order and physically in order. Well, mentally because and physically, of a I'll grant being. you. No, spiritually. I am... I am no. But you would have... Let me ask you something. Uh, we ha there was an experiment in, in England. Uh, that um, uh, was called, uh, let me see, a big mad experience, uh, experiment. And in this, a group of social scientists went out and asked a group of atheists uh, concerned with their life uh, on uh, the level of social science and a group of uh, religious persons. And the big mad theory was that belief in God made a difference. Do you think that your life would be any different if you did not have Well, it was different God? without God. My life was different. I can say that. But let's involve Steve for a minute because we haven't, we haven't, we've got him here and we may as well ask, do you have any questions you want to ask Steve? No, not really. Do you dislike him? Um, or what I he represents? dislike what he represents. Yeah, okay. All right, well, Stephen, let me ask you a question because let Madeline... Me, let me respond to that, Joe. Okay, go ahead. Um, I, I'm just curious how it, how it is uh, for you to live with such a hardened heart. For example, when I, I walked in the studio... A hardened heart. I, Your I, heart is a muscle. Um, <laughs> well, whatever metaphor you would choose to use, you have Please. to speak metaphorically. <laughs> no, so, I don't. Well, whatever hostility you harbor towards me when I walked in the room and refused to shake my hand, um, because you referred to me without even knowing me as your enemy, 
I wonder what it's like to live Religion with such hostility. Religion is the enemy of mankind. Am I your enemy? Uh, you are an enemy of mankind, and I am of that generic order, yes. You are the person who comes through with an idea concerned with uh, uh, um, um, fairy tales and expect people to order their lives in regard to your fairy tales. You have conceptualized a big god someplace, the great computer in you the know, sky. You know, Tolstoy said something about... Uh, Tolstoy was just as mad as he could Tolstoy possibly be. Tolstoy said something and, you about, know, you know, uh, we, can, we all love humanity, but with human beings we can't stand. And you, you accuse Christians of being uh, anti-human. You said... Uh, but your history... Of, your history shows well, human your history anti shows that. No, Christian God, history uh, shows the extraordinary animosity of the Christian of Christianity. Would you not say uh, that uh, Christianity is exclusive, and would you not say that uh, Christianity uh, uh, is? Um, uh, a religion which reaches out and attempts to include other people in it, that it is intolerant of another belief, and that you attempt to proselytize your position and attempt to convert. Well, that's why Christ said the we must transcend our old nature, because it's human nature that you were, but that you were having an argument But the atheists don't convert. With. If you're a Christian, we don't want you on but our there side. Is, there is, it is human nature to begin with. This but is why we No, it isn't human nature. And we're nature. talking, we're talking about an issue of human nature that I'm trying to address her on, and, and she refuses to be addressed on the issue. What is it like, personally, trying to be to, a human being? To be a human being who sees another human being because the way he or she is dressed, because immediately you stereotypically. Why do you use this bizarre uh, clothing? What why does do it you represent? use your bizarre clothing? No, no. Here you are dressed in black because your mind is dead. Is this right? <laughs> is this the why the symbolism? Why black? Why the insult? Because black is death. Why the insult? And religion is death. Why the insult? Religion is. Use your entire life to prepare for death. That's crazy. Human when you say to any woman out there, for instance, you must use your entire life now. All right, let's call the game for a second. In prayer, et cetera, Gotta in take order a break. to prepare for death. Gotta That's take crazy. a break. Madeline Murray O'Hare, Reverend Stephen Sidorik from the Council of Churches, and you at 861-TALK, All Night Live, 861-TALK. <laughs> send you 26 weeks oh, we don't. radio 85 channel 4 television it's the nation's first simulcast ladies and gentlemen on radio and tv on commercial television and radio uh and it's a it's tele radio is the word we've coined for it <coughs> madeline murray o'hare <laughs> and uh steve sidark from the council of churches in colorado and we're going to take a phone call from california now it's 125 denver time so that makes it 1225 california time right that's correct. Who are we speaking with, please? Uh, this is Sharon from Santanella, California. Hi, Sharon. You're on the air with us. Uh, thank you. I want to ask uh, Mrs. O'Hara uh, why that she wants to take the Christian program off of the television and off of the radio, plus taking Christmas carols and plays out of the schools. Well, I can talk about the schools first, because the first part of your question has to do with the uh, false rumor that has been around the United States for a little over seven years concerned with a so-called petition that I have in front of the FCC when I have no petition. There has never been anything of that sort. I believe in freedom of speech, and that freedom of speech includes having uh, religious idiots on the air. Uh, to answer the second part of your question, um, what was it? <laughs> I forgot your second part. Uh, why uh, you want to take... Uh, oh, schools. Yes. Because the schools are tax-supported, and the schools should only be teaching secular subjects. And if you want a religious icing on the cake for your children, it's up to you and your church uh, to teach your children the brand of religion that you want. It is not up to the public schools, uh, which are predicated on the Constitution and the principle of church-state separation, to use tax money uh, to teach a religion in the public schools. And I think as you think it over, uh, you will be aware that that is the proper course to take. Okay, we're going to take another call from Denver now. Denver, you're on the air on KOA with Joey Reynolds. Yes, I want to address this, uh, two questions to uh, Madam O'Hare. Uh, Mad o Madeline O'Hare. Madeline O'Hare. Oh, that's all right. You can call me Madam. Okay. In any case, uh, what I wanted to say is first, uh, let me say that I'm a pantheist. In other words, I'm, I, I don't uh, accept any organized religion, but I do see a higher consciousness as represented in nature. 
I recognize what a pantheist is, but thank you for the well, definition not, for the not audience. I'm not defining it for you, I'm defining it for the listeners, who many times would not know what a pantheist yes. was. Uh, the first question I'd like to ask is, uh, I heard not, not too long ago that to, to say that life on this planet is an accident, which is what you're saying pretty, uh, pretty much, uh, is like saying that you could roll the dice 60, 66 million times and come up with a, with a six every time. Now, that's, that's, uh, that's the kind of coincidence you're talking about. No, sir, we're not talking about that coincidence at all, and I, I expect that you would be uh, good enough to go back and read a little bit of astronomy and read the theories that are pre prevalent right now and uh, to which the scientific community gives some credence. There are eight, and they are available uh, in the l library, and you can go and look at them. Uh, it's not a matter of chance at all because actually there's either, there is only a 50-50% chance on, on anything at all. And that chance is either yay or nay. Therefore either it does or it doesn't. And it's not uh, uh, throwing six, 60 million times. It is just yay or nay, plus or minus, zero or one. Therefore, there is such a thing as a higher consciousness then? No, of course not. Well, Let me ask you about your higher consciousness and the good order. For instance, my husband recently died of cancer. If you look at it from the viewpoint of the cancer, the cancer had every right to exist. The cancer had every right to metastasize, uh, to put out colonies. Uh, it went from my husband's liver uh, to his bowels, to his intestines, to his uh, brain, to his nervous uh, system, to his lymph glands. Uh, looking at it from the viewpoint of the cancer, uh, this is idiotic because it killed its host. For God so loved the world that he gave us cancer so that well, it would kill its host. And a... this is logical? Well, the logical no, part yeah, of that, I'd like, I like, I like to address that. It's quite logical. Wait a minute. Thank, thank you. All right, because we only got a minute here, and I may as well kill it myself. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Everything right has on. opposites. That's, I don't know that's about a physical that. law. Well, I, I, I do know that. I mean, up has down, good has bad, and study. evil has good. Oh, those, come on. Well, those are all religious concepts. They only, they only exist because of the other. One exists because of the other. That's not true at all. And, and conversely... Life exists because there's death? There would not be life without death, would there? I don't know about that. I have no idea. We but wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go so far. We wouldn't accept that. life if there were not no, death. No, because life is a continuum. And as far as I can see, there, there, there has always been life of one form or the other. But life is uh, a continuum, and, and the life form uh, is constantly there. All right, let's take one more quick call then, all right? Okay. Denver, you're on the radio on KOA with Joey. Uh, good morning. Hi. Good morning. I was wondering if I could ask Mrs. O'Hare and Mr. Sidorik uh, both a question. Okay, can you make it short? Sure. Okay. One would be to define in, uh, to Mrs. O'Hare in, in aesthetic values the concept of conscience. And to Mr. Sidorik, how come a lot of churches seem so intimidated by atheistic ideas? To define consciousness, I think, is um, the perception of a living organism of its own life. Mm -hmm. That's the, as far as I'm interested in going. Okay, Steve. Uh, do you... I don't know how come so many churches are intimidated by atheists. I'm not intimidated by any atheists, and she's trying to intimidate me, and it's not working, and she won't oh, deal with it in my own intimidation of her. It seems both of you are a little intimidated, <laughs> but um, I was also wondering, in a hypothetical situation, if a child was raised by himself, without personal contact with any other people, would he become aware of a divine being or power? And if, if not, oh, if he did, what would be the reason for that or the reality or the need for that? And if not, why not and how would it affect his self-image? The atheist position is that all children are born atheists. And after they are born absolutely without religion, they are indoctrinated into a particular religion. And that religion is always an incident of A, time, and B, place. So that, for instance, had you been born where you were born, here in America, 600 years ago, you would have believed in the great spirit, and you would have believed in the kind of pantheism that the Indian community into which you had been born would have believed. Uh, if you had been born in China, you would probably have been uh, you would probably have been uh, a believer in the Taoist religion, or if you had been born in India, you would have been a Buddhist. So it is always an incident of time and place 
according to your indoctrination, but every child is born an atheist. Okay, Madeline, can you hold on for a second? <laughs> we hate to do all these things. I, I really hate You have to, to get your commercials in. We've yes. got to earn a living here. <laughs> all right, it's 1.30 Denver time on KOA and KOA TV, respectively. I'm Joey Reynolds, Madeline Murray O'Hare, and Steve Sidorik from the Council of Churches from Colorado. And uh, if you have any questions for Steve, you can call too, you know, 861-TALK. Now we're going to go to Rick. And I know that Rick Barber has some cold news, but it's hot in here, so don't worry about it. We're going to keep things real warm this morning, right? And it is, it is cold outside. Right? And it is, it is cold outside. In fact, right now,